Hey folks, it's Herb of the Week time, and we are doing Shepherd's Purse. Yep, and this is what she looks like. Hmm, it's got like a little uplifting smell to it. It does have like a, it smells like something you would cook with, honestly. Um, Shepherd's Purse, reading out of my Modern Herbal Dispensatory book. Um, the Latin name is Capsella Bursa Passatoris. Shepherd's Purse is one of the best herbs used, herbs, oh my gosh, can I read today, y'all? Is one of the best herbs to use for heavy bleeding during menstruation. Yes, that's why I chose it, because that is a common um, kind of request I get when folks come in here is heavy bleeding due to fibroids, endometriosis, and cysts, and all types of stuff. Um, it is an important herb in midwifery. It helps deliver the placenta after childbirth and cuts down on cuts down on postpartum bleeding. It helps to constrict blood vessels, and it is one of the few remedies that will increase blood pressure. So you gotta watch out for that. It can also be used to soothe the bladder and treat blood in the urine. Its warnings are not for use during pregnancy. So this is something that you would use postpartum. Um, it's energetic so that it's warming, drying, and constricting. And its properties are it's an astringent, which means it tightens the skin. Hypertensive means it raises pressure. Um, um, styptic and a vasoconstrictor. So definitely it helps with constricting blood vessels. It can also be used topically um, for any kind of cuts and wounds and bruises and things like that. So as for dosages, you can take this as a tea, two to three cups daily. Um, as a tincture, you would do a fresh plant, a one to two ratio, 95% alcohol. As a dried plant, a one to five ratio, 60% alcohol, one to two milliliters, two to four times daily. I think that's it. That is it. So let's talk about shepherd's pus. Um, it's also called sweet basil. Isn't that just a lovely name? I don't know, I didn't find something to name that. Sweet basil. Um, great basil, Genovese basil, and um, it's also Capsella, which is part of its Latin name, means like a little box. Because I think the fruit looks like it's in a, like it's like a little box. And I think it's shaped like a purse. Um, that's how it's got its name. I think it has a very long history on its name, so I'm not going to get into that. But the main reason I like this herb is because it stops heavy bleeding. Yes, and for those who have, like myself, who've dealt with heavy menstruation, it is a pain in the... So, it is a hemostat that stops passive hemorrhaging, um, which is what you would consider heavy bleeding, because you're not like bleeding out, but sometimes the shit feels like it, sorry. As a fresh herb, it aids in treating postpartum bleeding, heavy menstruation, mid-cycle bleeding, so, you know, bleeding between periods, and prolonged menstruation, so when you have lengthier days, lengthier menstrual cycles, due to ovarian or uterine fibroids, cysts, or endometriosis. It also reduces heavy bleeding caused by hormonal imbalances during perimenopause. So as we get closer to menopause, we're entering when we're entering perimenopause, you know, your estrogen gets a little wonky, you know, and so you might notice that as you're getting closer to menopause, your period actually gets heavier, you know? You're like, hold up, ain't this supposed to go in the opposite direction? So, yeah. So, from that hormonal imbalance, um, you could deal with um, lengthier period times. Um, like, you might go from a five-day cycle to a seven-day cycle or something like that, or menstruation cycle. Um, and then, as, as I said, heavy bleeding and heavy blood clots, too, that you're also eliminating. So, it can be kind of scary, especially if you're already anemic. Um, so shepherd's purse has a constituent called, I think it's called bursinic acid, and that actually um, constricts um, the blood vessels and then um, to stop the bleeding. And then rubin, rubinocide, that strengthens the, the capillaries. So it does wonders with kind of manipulating the blood flow as it needs to. It also contains significant amounts of vitamin K. And for those that don't know, vitamin K um, helps to clot the blood. So if you are on a blood thinner, I would not recommend um, taking Shepherd's Purse because that would kind of be counterproductive for you. I also would not take it if I was already on high blood pressure medications because, again, you're, um, this could raise your blood pressure more so. 
Um, if you were to make, if you wanted to make a tea with shepherd's purse, it works, it can work alone, but it's best with other herbs like yarrow, um, which also helps with blood flow, um, rose, which is a, an astringent and a toner. And if you don't have rose, you could use red raspberry leaf or ladies mantle. Any three of those could work together. And then I would also throw in some cinnamon in there too. Yes, all of that would make a wonderful slow the flow down on your period. <laughs> um, so it also reduces inflammation and passive bleeding due to gastric or intestinal ulceration. So that could be from like Crohn's disease, IBS, ulcerative colitis, any of those sorts where you got a lot of heat in the stomach and it causes um, bleeding in the stomach. Um, Shepherd's Purse can help with stopping that bleeding. And also hemorrhoids, didn't worry about hemorrhoids. It helps with nosebleeds, bloody sputum, you know, coughing up blood, blood in the urine due to passing of kidney stones, um, interstitial cystitis, and urinary tract bleeding. So you think blood, think shepherd's purse. Um, it promotes urination, so it's wonderful at enhancing um, the excretion of uric acid and phosphates, which is very helpful, um, which can help actually ease the, if you're trying to pass a kidney stone, that would be very helpful in that for um, eliminating those two, two um, chemicals. And then it, um, and as part of that is wonderful for people that are dealing with gout and arthritis. Yes, because anything, you want to get rid of that acid out of the body. <clears throat> if you were going to make a tea for that, that would be a different kind of tea. And that one would do, I would probably do shepherd's purse with a dandelion leaf, which works in the kidneys. A parsley also works to get stuff out the kidneys um, and couch grass. That would be a nice little blend. Um, you can also use shepherd's purse topically, as I mentioned. So if you have a cut or a wound, you know, on the skin, you can do like a poultice or basically taking like wet herb, putting it in like um, a cheesecloth or something and just laying it on the actual affected area to help stop bleed, stop the bleeding. It also works for... Um, bruises and sprains and things like that. It can also be taken just as a nutritive. Um, it's not my go-to for nutritive. I'd probably use like a nettle or something like, or alfalfa, but this herb does have like vitamin K, as I mentioned, calcium, potassium, beta carotene, fiber, vitamin C, iron. So it's got a lot of good herbs in it too. So shepherd's purse, y'all, that is your herb of the week. Take care.